All right, I think we're heading into Zoom. Looks like we're there. We are live. All right, welcome. Hi, Kia, good to see you today. Hey, Rachel, it's great to be here. Yes, yes, welcome, welcome. And hello, everyone, for our latest installment of Pause Friday, every Friday at 12 o'clock Pacific. I'm here live and we really just go into any tips or strategies on how to really thrive and intentionally shift our behavior. And that's what I call a pause is an intentional shift in behavior. So give yourselves a high five if you're here. I like to do like the camera high five. Ooh, and one for you, Kia. Yeah. That's with sound effects too. <laughs> it's just fun to kind of pretend you're slamming the camera. I don't, I don't know, maybe <laughs> that's just me or your laptop, just like enough. <laughs> and, uh, and also high-fiving too. And I am excited today because I have a dear, dear special friend and guest with me today who's going to be speaking about three keys to pause and better nutrition. So hi, Kia, welcome. And let us know a little bit about you. I'd love to learn and um, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Yes, yeah, so my name is Kia and I've known Rachel now for a few years. We have a great connection, love this woman and I love the work that she does. So I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. Um, I have a background actually in psychology and health research and moved into the health and wellness field, you know, about half a dozen years ago. And so now really function as an empowerment and health coach um, and work both with organizations and with individuals to just, you know, like Rachel does so much, help align us into the life that we really want, right? the body that feels good, the life that feels good, places that are fun, like, you know, so I'm very much about having fun. I just think life doesn't make sense unless we can have fun, even when it's stressful, even when it's chaotic, even when it's crazy, like there, there can still be an element of fun threading through our day. Right. And so that's sort of what I bring is just helping people to realign themselves into a healthful, thriving body and life. So that is yeah, let's hear it for it some fun and some play as uh, yes, that is actually so important, whatever you're doing, because life can be a little bit burdensome sometimes, <laughs> right? Kia, I know, uh, you know, we talk offline and I know you just moved, you've had a lot of things going on. And so play can just make it way more enjoyable and, and, and move through things in such a better way. So like kudos for reminding us about that. And yeah, that's important. And love your work, love the work that you're doing with companies and nutrition and resets. And as a reset today, I wanted to invite you to, to help us pause. And that to me is any intentional shift in behavior, but would you like to lead us in just a, a meaningful pause that you like to do? Yeah, so one of my favorites, and we're gonna be doing it inside right now, but my favorite place to do it is actually outside. And this is something you can take 30 seconds and, or you could take five minutes to do it, depending on how much time you have and, you know, where you are and all that kind of stuff. So if possible, the kind of bonus, bonus pieces to this are if you're barefoot and have dirt around you, right? But if you have shoes on and you're inside, it works just as well. So but it's really standing or sitting, but with your feet flat on the ground. And this is really a grounding thing, right? So many of us live in those days where we're just going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And we're, we're totally up in our heads, right? And we just start spinning and spinning and spinning. And this is how our stress level starts creeping up and our blood pressure starts creeping up and all the bad hormone reactions that come along with stress start happening. So to ground ourselves back down and become more centered and back in our bodies is just such a huge thing. And the way that I find the, one of the fastest ways to do it is to get your feet on the ground. So I invite you for a moment, actually, we can all do this together just for a minute, is to plant your feet firmly on the ground. I call it finding the four corners of your feet. So under the inside ball of your foot, under your, your big toe, the ball of your foot under your pinky toe, and then the two sides of your heel 
right? We all have a way of standing. Some people stand a little bit more on the outside of their feet. Some people stand more on the inside or the front or the back. And I'm going to invite you to feel all four corners of your feet and see if you can feel them pretty equally on the ground so that your weight is really pretty balanced. Now I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And your deep breath don't think of your lungs and under your rib cage. I want you to envision your diaphragm all the way at the bottom. When you take your deep breath, you're gonna push your diaphragm all the way down into the area of your stomach. And breathing in through your nose. And take a pause at the top. And then exhale through your mouth for a little bit longer than it took you to inhale nice and slow. And keep that breath going for just three or four breaths. And as you breathe in, I want you to envision the energy from the center of the earth. And it's pulling up through the four corners of your feet, through the bottom of your feet and coming all the way up your body. And it circulates through the whole body. And as it pauses, as you pause your breath, that energy pauses at the top of your head and it's pulling all the stress out of your body. And as you exhale slowly, it is breathing it down back into the earth. And you can just continue to breathe that way. One breath, three breaths, five breaths. And then you can blink your eyes back open, move the rest of your body around. And it allows us to center back into the ground, out of our heads, into our bodies. And just, it's a super simple one. I've been known before to just do it while I'm at my desk and I realize I'm getting like this and I'll just be like, okay, I got to take a moment. And I take my moment and then all of a sudden I can focus again right? And my intention is back to where it needs to be. And I'm not going in my head anymore. Thank you. I, I, uh, I really enjoy the four corners of the feet. And I felt, I'll just share with my experience and just give us a like if you did that and feel different now. If there's been an energy shift or a change in your state, maybe you're a little less in your head. I know I did. And when I felt the four corners, I actually felt like a sensation going on the inner, like my inner back of the leg. And I think I was just focusing my attention there, but I think there was like some definite conduit there <laughs> with the ground. And thank you. Oh, I feel like totally resourced right now. It's so great having, you know, to find kind of feel that moment of balance too, right? On your feet. Yeah. Cause it is true. I mean, I think it's so interesting sometimes just to stand. And without judgment, just bring awareness to my body and say, okay, where am I leaning? Where am I shifting? Where's my weight? Where's my weight not going? You know, and it's, it's interesting to feel that in our bodies sometimes, again, with no judgment, because we don't, we're, we're not like centered <laughs> up and down kind of beings, yeah. right? We all walk with a certain gait or we choose to stand with one hip out or, you know, I mean, we all have our little things. And to just notice that sometimes, because that can be where stress starts getting to be held yeah. in the body, you know? And yeah. So my brother, my brother has this great saying, Drew, he says, the body tells a story mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, if we have a hip, you know, if we lean to one side or it's just, it's all indicators of what's going on inside, I think, in a way that maybe we don't understand in our heads sometimes. So thank you for that. That's right. Yeah. So you mentioned that you help companies and women help reset their nutrition. And today we're talking about pausing to reset our nutrition. And I know you're this expert. So I'd love to hear just maybe what do you have to share for us in the pause of Thrive Sisterhood? Um, and if you've got any questions for, for Kia, please, please put them in the chat. If you're here and you want to add them, or if you're in the replay, even add those in and we'll see if we can get them answered. 
But yeah, my, my thought was, what can you share? Because I know you also have something coming up next month in September, which will be a training, which is very exciting, which people can attend once uh, once we have more details. But what do you what do you got on pausing and nutrition and resetting? How do we okay. do that? So this is I, I love this. And yes, I think when I talk about nutrition, um, I talk about it from a slightly different angle. Like, yes, we talk about like regular nutrition, right. And what your, what your body needs and what your body does not need. And, you know, how does that work kind of physiologically at the same time, to me, there is so much more that goes into that whole picture, right? Like if you are trying to eat well for your body and yet you're so tired, that you can't see straight. It's actually really hard to do, right? Anyone get the afternoon munchies when you also have the afternoon lulls, right? That's super, super common, right? We start getting worn out and tired in the afternoon. So what do we do? Reach for coffee, reach for chocolate, you know, something to stimulate us and get us up and going again. So there's, to me, there's so much more that goes into nutrition. So I have three tips for you guys today. Only one of them is food related. All right. I know. And isn't that funny? Cause we always think it's the food thing, but it's so not, it's so more than that. So yeah. Great. Yeah. I love it. So we'll start with the food one. Cause I think it's fun. So my number one tip for resetting your, um, nutrition is actually to see how many colors of the rainbow you can eat every day. Yeah. <laughs> when so I, right. When I talk about this, we're talking specifically fruits and vegetables right? Starchy vegetable, like whatever kind of vegetable, but fruits and vegetables. We're not talking like, I don't know. I don't skittles. even know. What color. Like that's, that's right. We're not talking skittles there. Thank you. For my example, right. You can't eat a rainbow. I've read, I I read skittles. What are you talking about? I ate the, I ate the rainbow today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And licorice, red vines. Does that count? <laughs> that's right. That's right. And the rainbow is actually really amazing. So why do I do this? It's because the different colors mean different kinds of antioxidants and nutrition in the vegetable and fruit. So the wider variety of colors that you, you consume, actually the more you are kind of filling your body with different kinds of protective antioxidants that help battle disease, they help keep you healthy, they help keep you younger, longer, you know, all of those kinds of things. So if we only are eating orange, right? Carrots, one of like the big ones that most people eat a yeah. lot of, then you're missing this whole array. So it's actually a game that I'll play with my kids. And my kids are often the one at the end of the day, that's like, mom, we, we didn't get purple today. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, or Arr. like they bring it up. And so if you do have kids, it's actually a really fun thing to get them inspired <laughs> to do. And, you know, they'll sit there and be like, okay, where are we getting our colors today? Like, we've got to make a rainbow, right? And you can actually, I mean, I think it's fun to just do it ourselves. So that's my first tip is shop for a rainbow when you are next time at the grocery store or the farmer's market or wherever it is that you get those yeah. fruits and vegetables. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And what if you want to eat ultraviolet? What happens? Ultraviolet? <laughs> that's a trick question. <laughs> There's like no, you can't see ultraviolet. It's a... Uh, it's not it's know, often really talking really? colors within the visual spectrum. <laughs> can I eat gamma? Okay, no, I'm sorry. I'm not, not going there. And you right, can visible spectrum. I'm that's just, right. And it's it's like playing. you can include black, right? Brown, even white, right? White beans yeah. are great. Legumes totally count. Black beans, awesome. Yeah. All yeah. That was my other question was like, what if it's just all white and that would be the same, like cauliflower, but it's not, right. it's not every rainbow color. So it's like, you need the other ones too. You need the other ones too. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. I love, I love like making it into a more of a, um, a fun aspect too. That's really fun. Cause I've heard that before, right. Eat the rainbow, but I've never actually gone into it to say like, you know, being more of a problem solver, like, what did I not eat today? Oh, I need more green. So that's right. motivating to me. And I hope others as well. Yeah. Totally. Thank you. It turns out blue and purple can be challenging, especially certain times of the year. Blue. Right? Yeah. Blue. Blueberries is what it comes to mind for me. Blueberries. Yeah. And I do have blueberries. I have like, like blueberries are good in shakes and like all that stuff. So that's right. That's yeah. right. 
put it on blue potatoes blue potatoes blue corn you know there are other blue things out there there's some blue it's a root vegetable and I don't remember what it is either but anyhow so there's other blue things but there are very few blue and there's not that many purple either right purple cabbage eggplant you can get purple green beans it turns out actually and you can get purple carrots sometimes now that's right. You can get rainbow of carrots, actually. Carrots come yeah, out. you can get the whole rainbow. Okay. You can eat your All right. Well, that's bell. awesome. <laughs> Don't do what that. What else do we have? What, what, uh, what's the, what are our two other things from uh, resets? So the second tip that I have has to do with those afternoon lulls, right? When we are reaching for food, we probably don't actually need, right? To stimulate us through the rest of the day. Those are yeah, probably, yeah. probably extra calories that your body is not actually needing. It's just your blood sugar has dropped and you are getting groggy. So you're either reaching for sugar or for caffeine, right? Okay. Instead, my tip is to actually energize your body through movement. Now, my favorite way to do this is to have a dance party, but research actually okay does us. but research actually shows that body movement is better is more effective than food or a nap at helping us reboot our system and get us through the rest of the day and all it takes is like five minutes or less walk outside for a little bit do some jumping jacks have a dance party you know whatever it is you can get your whole office to do it with you be like here's the three o'clock break all right yeah stand up and do something for five minutes at 2.55 before the three o'clock meetings start Um, and just get your body moving. And it works so well and it's a great habit to develop, super easy. And then you're not consuming all of these extra calories that you should not be having. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And and all the research is telling us, I think now that movement really incorporates more, uh, more like learning, right? Experientially, you're retaining more, you're priming yourself for being, alert, which is, I think, great. It's supposed yeah. to the slumpy side. Yeah, that's right. Your brain actually functions that much better after that's a pause. It's an awesome pause. It is. It's super awesome, which is why like things like walking meetings are amazing, right? You do better problem solving, better critical thinking, you know, you can make it through conflict situations better if you've had some movement, all of those yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Type in the chat, walk and talk. Like I love that, t- that term. And, uh, that's what my old manager would call it, a, lo- a walk and talk. And then it sounds kind of cool. Like you're like, yeah, like I'll do a walk and talk. That sounds <laughs> very cool and, and hip. So, so yeah, hashtag yeah. walk and talk in the chat. If you if you are up for that or you've done one, I would love to know. Yeah, That's right. gonna, yeah That's thanks. Right. So number three then has mm-hmm. to do again with this idea that when we're tired, when we're stressed, right? When our body is out of whack, it is really hard to have nutrition and food in line with what our body actually needs. We don't actually know. We can't, we, our body can't tell us what it means, right? We don't get the right kind of signals from, from our body. We're craving things that our body doesn't actually want, right? So the last piece actually has to do with sleep because I think sleep is enormously important, right? Not just the number of hours you get, but the quality of sleep that you get. You can get eight hours of sleep a night, but if you're sleeping kind of at surface level and not dropping into really good deep sleep, all sorts of brain activity is not happening that needs to happen. Your brain's not clearing out the trash. You're waking up groggy, all those kinds of things. So my last tip is actually to pamper yourself before bed. And what do I mean by this? This is another kind of example of a pause, right? And a reset. It's an intentional reset. How many of you out there, you can like say, yes, I'm guilty in the chat. If this is you, will be either working or watching TV or on your phone or some screen leading right up to when you go to bed, right? You're trying to get a report done. You're like finishing something up. Oh, wait, what? Just one last thing, right? And then you go straight from that like focused activity, go get yourself ready for bed and fall into bed, right? How many of you are guilty of doing that? I know I am. And then here I am, like, I don't do it all the time, but I can get in those modes, especially, I know I, like my course, we, I lead it Wednesday nights. It ends at 9 PM Eastern, which I'm on right now. 
And I'm just like, oh, let me like post this and do this because I'm already like in that mode. I'm already on Zoom. And then yeah. like, if I'm not really diligent, if I'm not pampering myself, I'll be just, I could just stay there for an hour and a half. That's right. It's really hard. That's right. And again, like the pamper moment does not have to take long. I'm a huge proponent of things not having to take a long time because we don't have a lot of extra time in the schedule, right? But it it's literally allowing yourself an intentional shift from daytime activity over to nighttime activity. And what that does is it allows your sleep hormone, your melatonin to start rising to get yourself ready for a deep night of sleep, right? It starts lowering your cortisol, which should be low already, but may or may not be depending on, you know, what's going on in life, but it allows those things to balance a little bit more. It allows your brain to start just quieting down, right? I mean, if you get the hamster brain going in the middle of the night, you wake up at 2 a.m. and it's like, right. So just allowing all of these things to settle themselves. And so your body actually knows like, oh, guess what? I'm about to go to sleep which is the most important work your body does all day long Yeah, is sleep. So much more happens when we're sleeping than we give credit for. So allowing yourself 20 minutes, 15 minutes, even 10 minutes of something that you just do every day, every evening before you go to bed, whether that's after you brush your teeth, you just sit down with like a fun favorite book for 20 minutes and read, right? Or you make yourself a cup of tea and you have your tea while you're getting ready for bed or cleaning up the house or whatever it is, right? But something that's an indication to your body that a shift is happening, that you're moving in a new direction, it's time to start unwinding, it could be dimming the lights in your house, you know, all those kinds of things. So that is the third tip is allowing yourself, giving yourself the gift of somewhere between 10 to 30 minutes before your bed every night that you do the same thing. So it's an indication to your body. It's time to chill out. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. I put it in the chat too, because I would love to hear if you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, what is that activity you're going to do? Like, let's just call it out and create one right now and just try it. doesn't mean you're going to keep it forever. Maybe you switch it up. Right. And I, and I love that tangible transition, right? I think that's like, I think of those things as transitions, which is hard. We, it is hard to transition, whether it's going into work or out of work or lunchtime and getting your kids ready for bed. All of that stuff is a big deal. And uh, what do you do? Can I ask you what yours is? Mine's, mine's a book. I always, I make myself a cup of tea or a magnesium drink that I really like. And I have my book. And some nights I read for 10 minutes, some nights I read for half an hour. It depends on how tired I am, depends on what time it is. But even if I'm up late and I've been working and pushing, 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 doesn't matter what time it is. I make my hot drink and I make, and I bust out my book. And that's like my body's indication that it's so inspiring. I, I, um, I think I've gotten out of the habit of a book and I'm curious what, if anyone has an activity now, what is it for you? I like, I, like I, so I'm in the habit right now, just as in the pandemic of watching like Netflix before I go to bed, which is, I don't think the best way to go, especially, you know, I have blue light glasses, all that stuff, but it's, it can be too stimulating. It can be challenging and I don't like it. Right. I would much rather be reading a book. So you're inspiring me to go back to my book. (laughs) And I will say, I got a good one I can time, read called pause. <laughs> totally. That's the time where I read the books that are not mentally like engaging as well. Yeah. Right. If yeah. I'm they're like something new, like that's not what I'm reading it. Cause I'll be right. like, oh, and I have to write this down. And oh, this is really, you know, it's like pure, fun, just chill, like, like good book. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Do you have any that you recommend? Just like a fun read that you've enjoyed over the last couple of months, maybe? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this actually was probably about a year or so ago, but it's still one of my favorites, but the, um, Guernseyville potato peel pie society. It's something like that. It's, (laughs) it's such a great book. I'm in, I want that book. (laughs) You heard it here first, everyone. You got to get on it. It's like the way to go. Guernsey potato. No, the Guernsey potato peel pie society. Yeah. It's a book that it takes place in world war II. Oh. on the island of Guernsey, which is between France and England. Okay. The Guernsey Literary there it is. Peel Pie Society. Yeah. Because they weren't allowed to have book clubs. And so they had to come up with another name for oh it. I'm putting so this in the actually, <laughs> They could actually get together during the um, German occupation. 
Wow. That sounds really good. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get it. It sounds super <laughs> good. I just put it in the chat. Guernsey Literary Potato Peel Society. Cause I think those are really, yeah. Like I would, I, I find, I find my, I don't know if anyone here can relate. You start a book and then like you get in about 30, 40 pages and you stop. Yeah. But that's me. And I, and I'll read stuff that's like really more probably stimulating than it needs to be for bedtime. So I think I need to switch that up, Kia. And thank you for, for sharing all of that and helping all of us learn these three tips. So the three tips, rainbow eating, eat the rainbow and, and like call it out. Second tip, the, the movement. That's right. Yeah, party for your afternoon lulls. Don't reach for coffee or chocolate. Get your body moving. That's right. Start doing like the wave. Five minute dance party, baby. Yeah. <laughs> And third one is do something that you love before bed. That's like a really good wind down. That's right. And something to transition, control. you know, and sometimes that could even just be like breathing in the shower, right? You yeah. Shower before you go and, to bed. and I heard a warm shower before bed is, is like a really helpful way to wind down. Like it can help stimulate. Totally. Like bring in just your make sure you're being, being intentional during the shower, right? You're not still yeah. thinking about the work project you just left behind. Right. Oh, I'm here. I'm like. That's right. out my day. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Anything with intention is so, so critical. And, and then tell us about what you're going to be doing in September and how can we find out more about you and learn more when I know you're in the progress moments of it. So, um, what, what, is, what is it that you you're going to be having? That's right. So it's going to be in the second half of September. The exact dates are still to be, to be determined, but I will make sure that I let you know when I have those. And we'll and post called, it here. We'll like get it back in and everything, but yeah. Yeah. So it's called the lighten your body and mind five day adventure. And the whole premise about around it is, you know, if you're interested in just feeling lighter, right. Whether that's in pounds or in emotions or in stress level or in mood, right. This is the adventure for you. I don't like to do challenges. I think we have plenty of challenges in the yeah. world around us right now. So we come together for five days and we have a really good time and we go on an adventure together. Um, and it's all about creating lightness in your life, communicating how you communicate with your body so it can tell you exactly what it needs and when it needs it, how to incorporate fun even when life is stressful, how to avoid self-sabotage because we really like to do that to ourselves a lot. <laughs> and you know, what is the power of eliminating inflammation? What does that mean for your body? How do you do it? And, and what does that look like? What is the benefit of doing that? We hear a lot about inflammation in the world today. And what does it actually mean? And what's a super simple way to get that done? So that's kind of what nice. the five day adventure is all about. And yes. Oh, that's so great. I'm just putting it in the chat here. So we'll stay tuned. We'll post more info when it's available towards the second half of September when it's coming. Love it. Five days to lighten your body and mind. And Kia, we will be with you. And thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm honored that you're able to share all of these amazing tips with us because we know we can thrive. It's about the being and the doing, right? And like, how do you bring the best of those in for yourself? And then and like being healthy and nutrition is a humongous part of that, I think. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for being here and sharing your wisdom with all of us here. You are welcome. And thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to go dive in and see what the comments are. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, and it's been such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Rachel. You're welcome. Thanks so much, Kia. Bye. Bye.